Hello, I'm Fiona Graham. I'm Editorial Director at Light Reading. I'm here with Mats Johansson from Ericsson, and we're going to be talking about another of the big topics in the industry at the moment, building a cloud-native 5G core. Because of the pandemic, I'm here in London in our London studios, um, and Mats is at Ericsson HQ in Stockholm. So, hi Mats. Um, why do we need um, 5G core and 5G NR standalone? Well, the reason we need it is uh, essentially that the the entire promise of 5G is really to offer all of these new exciting services for enhanced mobile broadband like AR, VR and also a lot of new IoT related use cases and they simply demand 5G NR and 5G core in, a, in order to be possible to facilitate the way we imagine. There are, there are several, there are a few areas that are improved. First of all, the signaling between control and user plane will be speeded up. That will give much shorter setup times, allow for short latency services, and it will give a much better user experience. Secondly, we will have a simpler architecture with the new standardized architecture, cloud native, so it will be easier to operate as well. Thirdly, we will have uh, new features like network slicing. And why is that important? Well, the benefit with network slices is that you can have one network for all services, IoT services, consumer services, etc., which is a huge benefit. And lastly, this gives an opportunity to build up an ecosystem of different players to innovate new applications on top of the 5G platform. So it's, it's quite a good, uh, a lot of things that we get. And from your point of view, what are the main things that we need to be thinking about and preparing for, for CSP's adoption of, of 5G? Well, there, there are a number of things that CSP has to prepare for, uh, for this transition. First of all, since we are talking about cloud native applications built on containerized software, uh, we need to prepare the underlying infrastructure platform to cater for that. And in the industry today, most are already trying out virtual machine based, uh, often in smaller silos or, or some have started to build larger clouds. They need to you know, complement to add a container as a service layer based on Kubernetes uh, to be able to onboard the containerized applications. That's one very important area. Another area is the way you operate uh, your, your networks uh, and you need to go into automation a bit more. Security needs to be enhanced. There are a lot of new security features that we will see coming along in standardization, but you now need to supervise and, and manage uh, security holistically since you're adding all these devices. So there, there are a number of things and uh, also edge computing will come into play where we move applications much closer to the users to facilitate new services uh, and short latency. It could be anything from gaming to uh, self-driving vehicles or uh, automation in the factories. So you mentioned automation. Um, automation and orchestration, they're big talking points with 5G. What will actually change um, and, and why? It, it needs to change because the, the complexity is increasing inherently in, in 5G. As I mentioned, when we go to the distributed cloud and edge computing, also network slices, we're introducing new concepts. We're adding a lot of layers of software stacks. And these needs to be lifecycle managed and just the management of the entire network will require automation. Otherwise, it will be too cumbersome to do manually. Faults might be introduced in a way we don't like to see happen. So that, that it, will be, it will be necessary to do that. And, and for that, you need to move from your VNF managers that everybody is using today to get more of uh, the NFV orchestration and uh, later on you need to have more of service orchestrations to 
orchestrate the services end to end from, from the demand connected to the BSS system. So yes, it will be a journey over many years to automate and to uh, get an orchestration that goes really end to end. So, so yes, that, that needs to happen as well. It will lower the costs in a good way. So, I mean, this is, this is the theory. How about real life implementations? I mean, what, what are the challenges that you're seeing and, and how are you seeing this play out with your customers? We have been working for several years with many, many uh, CSPs in the market, uh, even a couple of hundred at the moment. One operator I could mention in particular is Swisscom, whom we have been collaborating on all the layers of the stack, from the cloud infrastructure, 5G core, orchestration, uh, and, but also voice and IMS services, and virtualizing their platform, building data centers across the country. And they have a very clear strategy to become a leading player within their market and offer various types of services and enable their platform for innovation. So they are a very good example. Uh, they have also changed their operations. We are also working a lot with major tier ones in the world like China Mobile and the, also the players in, in the US. Players like Verizon, for instance. They have uh, a very firm plan to, to uh, make new businesses and inroads into the enterprises market. And uh, that's why we see them as very interesting to work with. So it's a lot happening over there. And looking forward, what's next, do you think? Next, I think, is to continue to, to really deploy. 5G Core is still new uh, on the market. Uh, we really m need to make sure that these platforms really work such that we can onboard 5G core and also to extend our capabilities in the platform. We can add also later on edge computing and we can add cloud RAN to the mix. Uh, I think that, that, that is what we will be working with intensively for the coming years. But it's great to see that 5G has been launched and it continues now to develop over, over the coming years. Thank you so much, Matt. There's an awful lot to unpack there. And this is a conversation I know that we're going to be having again and again over the coming years. Um, that's it from me uh, in London. And thank you very much for joining us in Stockholm. Thanks, Fiona. Great to talk to you.